the smell that comes out of the mouth of the fasting person is sweeter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than, than the smell of musk. And musk doesn't necessarily mean the musk that we know today, by the way. Misk in the Arabic language, the word misk, it means the most beautiful fragrance. The most beautiful fragrance. But then people later on loved certain fragrances or certain perfumes and they started calling them musk. But the musk that the Arabs knew, it comes originally from one type of deer. They extract it from a gland within, you know, and I believe in the neck or the chest of a deer. So that's the only specific type that is called misk in Arabic or specific fragrance. But any beautiful smell in Arabic at the time of the Prophet ﷺ used to be called misk, which we call in English, English musk. So the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ is saying that the smell that comes out, we know when you don't eat and drink, there is that some kind of smell, unpleasant smell that comes out of your mouth. And it doesn't come from the mouth, it actually comes from, from your stomach. Comes from your stomach. So this kind of smell, because people usually find it unpleasant, but it is with Allah sweeter than musk. Why? Because of the cause of it. The cause of it is such a great act. You see how much Allah loves fasting? That even this unpleasant smell that comes out of your mouth, with Allah it is sweeter than, than musk. Why? Because it, the cause of it is fasting. It's such a great act of worship. And basically, subhanAllah, love, you know, when you love someone, you start to love some of their traits, even if you originally hate such traits. There are people who have a sense of humor, or people who are sarcastic, let's say, that you don't like, you don't like sar sarcasm. But if you happen to fall in love, or admire a person who, ha who is sarcastic, you'll be surprised that you will start to like sarcasm. Specifically when it comes from that person. That's how we humans, we're not completely logical. We have a lot of bias. We have a lot of bias. So, uh, uh, there's something, there's, something uh, there's a line of poetry, one, uh, one Bedouin, he, 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 loved, he fell in love with a woman. So what he said, because he wants to express how much he loves her, so he says, أُحِبُّهَا وَتُحِبُّنِي وَيُحِبُّنَا قَتَهَا بَعِيرِي he says, I love her and she loves me. And my camel loves her camel. So that shows that when humans, like, obviously when we love, we love whatever trait is associated with what we love, usually. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though to us this smell is unpleasant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His greatness, because of how much He loves fasting, He even loves that smell that comes out of the mouth. Now the scholars have argued, should we like strive to get this smell or should we strive to remove it since Allah subhanahu wa loves it? That's a dispute. It's a beautiful dispute among the scholars. But uh, from an usuli, usul fiqh perspective, the strongest opinion says no. This smell comes accidental. So even though Allah loves it, He loves it because of the fasting. So the love goes to the fasting first and foremost. So you should not strive to keep it. You can eliminate it with using the miswak. With, you, with using, and with the Prophet ﷺ, there's nothing that came from him, nothing authentic that came from him, that he prohibited using the miswak during fasting. So you can use the miswak during fasting. You can use the miswak during fasting. So the, uh, what I would say according to, uh, to my personal view, the strongest opinion among the scholars is that Yes, you should use the miswak and not, keep, not necessarily keep that smell. If it comes out, fine, fine. But it's not intended by and in itself. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, This is the same hadith.